In politics, it is often stated that perception is reality. Hello, YouTube. Keep this and the following words at the forefront of your mind as we engage each other. And thank you so kindly for sharing your time with me today. Control the mind. Depart the fool from his money and contribute to your destruction. Control the mind. Depart the fool from his money and contribute to your destruction. I reason this is the veridical message of the priest and the priestess of entertainment. When I was very young, I was fascinated with seeing those who looked like me on the big screen. Black Caesar with James Brown, Superfly with Ron O'Neill, and Friday Foster with Pamela Greer. These are but a few titles I remember. Of course, when viewing these, I was managed. Managed by rational adults. If the film was apparently saturated with filth, I was sent away. I definitely was not allowed to view scenes that were suggestive of improper sexual demeanor. If I was embarrassed to view the video contents in front of my mom, I knew it was inappropriate. Also, I knew as a young child that the characters were not to be emulated. I never saw these actors as role models. It was all about the fact that they had the ability to use an art form to capture the imagination and to communicate. Though I could never figure out, as a child, why they would want to play a character that was criminal, one that promoted promiscuity, or which was characterized as submissive. Later, I figured the range of possible human experiences was huge. Therefore, they would be walking down a path of boredom if they had only portrayed a good guy. As time passed, I realized that some actors rarely portrayed characters that were vastly different. Despite this, I comprehended the need at a young age to separate the artists from the art. I knew from application of my discernment that they had character flaws. This helped me to define their purpose as casual entertainment. Later, I realized that people in and outside of my community digested these images differently than I. Some were fascinated with the lines they heard, and in some cases, the essence of the character. I also noticed, for the person who appeared not to exercise their mind often, these productions functioned as traps. They were snared into this world of make-believe. I saw how the attitudes and behavior of some radically changed after a big box office event. Some were heavily influenced. Either they took on certain behaviors, or they began to overlay the images that they experienced onto real life. This data appeared to invite others to use it as reinforcement for stereotypes. Indeed, it became obvious that Hollywood and its products was a weapon of mass deception. As I continued to grow and observed, I understood the need to be careful of what I consumed, speaking of both visual and or auditory data. Then, one day, it happened. A person I considered to be a punk, one Sean Carter, came on the scene. Just a drug dealer turned rapper. At the time, he was considered a hot commodity and a musical steamroller. He never did anything for me. Not one thing. It befuddled me how this piece of fecal matter had the ability to win, I believe it is now, 17 Grammys. I can care less what these granters of approval and distinction declare regarding people who dwell in the vast wastelands of rap. I still remember that horrific day. It was February 21st, 1990. I'll never ever forget it, when Millie Vanilli won the Grammy Award for Best New Artist. So, Jay-Z's musical accolades means nothing to me. That was the day the Grammys died. To me, he is a rich punk that probably fancies himself a wordsmith. 
His ego is so large, he probably thinks his success is akin to Isaac Newton or Dr. Ben Carson. So what? He deliberately arranged for effect, words together over a simplistic, to my ears, and far from fulfilling beat. This bastard started young, dealing crack, shot his brother, and stabbed a record producer in 1999, while all the time he dealt audio tornado. He had no issue being flippant as he sprayed the word bitch to describe all women. He had no issue being dehumanizing. His influence was and still is toxic. Any man who is so full of himself that he had the audacity to say, quote, my presence is charity, just who I am, just like Obama's is. Obama provides hope, end quote. <sighs> he is filled with overbearing pride. He is willing to flaunt his money, but has done nothing to improve the world. Also, like Obama, he has proven poisonous for blacks. Indeed, he has not used his celebrity in a socially responsible way. We as black men cannot allow the likes of this creature to be held with esteem. We have much better men to admire than a product from a rags to riches story, a former drug dealer turned rapper turned entrepreneur. We need to shun the idea of encouraging young men to compose rap lyrics, acting, throwing footballs, or dribbling basketballs. I have much respect for certain artists, but not for this bastard or those like him. It is my opinion that his purpose, one of many, is to entice people down a road that will, more often than not, produce broken dreams, drain one of their integrity, and desensitize you as it encourages you to abandon your humanity. We must embrace education. If not institutionally, then personally. We have been foolish in allowing these opportunists a stage where they can define us to the public. Yes, we need money, unfortunately. We have been suckered as a collective into believing it is appropriate to pay others to exist. Until we change that paradigm, we need to create opportunities that will greatly benefit us because people need our brain power. Collectively, we can be more than entertainment for the masses. However, if you are going to be an artist, put yourself in a position to be independent. If you are going to be an artist, do not create harm. We have had too much of this already. Never forget where you come from and where you want to to go. Hopefully you will, unlike Jay-Z, comprehend the need to help others less fortunate and not for a tax write-off or for bragging rights. I am not speaking of helping people to feed their materialistic needs. I am speaking of helping others to be able to help themselves. The last thing we need to do is reinforce negative programming. It is toxic to recite mantras that glorify alcohol and drug consumption. It is toxic to play into the objectification of women. We must banish every avenue that states that anti-intellectualism is the way. We must always think of a possible rainy day. How about striving to, whether you make it or not, to be financially independent? Anytime we see financial irresponsibility, we must crush it. This is surely a path to servitude. Though I do not personally know Jay-Z, I am willing to state, by means of deduction, that one of his character makeup can never care about you, besides how you help him negate his financial liabilities and build his wealth. If he was a real man, he would constantly discourage people to invest in drugs, to invest in a lifestyle that will produce nothing but heartache. He would tell you that the rap facade is a means to an end. 
he would take his future prophets of all of the songs which was littered with profanity and negative ideas and submit that money to a medical and educational fund for blacks. He would do that because his major support, especially in the beginning, came from blacks. He would do this because he poisoned the youth no matter their ethnicity. If he can produce damaged goods, correction, if he can participate in the co-creation of damaged goods for our society to deal with, then surely he can give back to society and hopefully help restore youth that have a chance, an opportunity to grow. Outside of doling out public relation money, I'm sorry to tell you that that will never happen. Definitely not on a regular basis. Hollywood and most commercial music, in my opinion, has become a weaponized psychological assault on all of mankind. Make no mistake, however, it disproportionately affects blacks. Is it not provable, or at least can we not reason with some assurance that, collectively speaking, our temperamental and behavioral attributes, propensities, and pursuits have been engineered to conduct mankind towards thoughtless diversions, brutality, underachievement, dependency, and a trap which exists in a state of willful, deliberate deceptiveness. As long as we have musical giants like Emmanuel Axe, Yo-Yo Ma, Edgar Meyer, Herbie Hancock, Chick Corea, Bela Fleck, John Williams, Wycliffe Gordon, Renee Fleming, and Stefan Dorr, Jay-Z and his fan base, need to realize he truly is insignificant. Thank you for your time.